everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ITEL Insights Podcast. My name is Dane ITEL, and I am the founder and lead analyst for ITEL Insights. Uh, today, we're going to be going over the Greater Vancouver Condo Market Update, and as you can see by the title, the new listings have doubled the amount of sales for the sixth straight month. Now, you'll see that headline and hear that headline nowhere else, but of course, that's why you stick with ITEL Insights for the actionable intelligence that we offer through our analytical interpretation of the charts. Uh, before we do get into that content, I just wanted to say a quick thank you. Uh, we have amassed over 550 subscribers, and that's awesome. Um, the, uh, the subscriber count is rapidly growing, and in order to continue to do so, we ask that you uh, feel free to share this content on your social media platforms, your, with your friends, with your family. And uh, one other thing, if you don't mind giving us that one click of the thumbs up, it goes a long way with us. It uh, makes us feel good about the content that we are producing here for you. So uh, with that said, I'm going to toss the chart up and then after a little bit, I'm just going to move it over to the side here so that we can continue the conversation. Um, the se September's average sale price for the uh, condo market finished the month at $698,996. So let's call that $700,000. Now at that technical data price, it's, it's trying to enter back into that upper echelon of our, our current market cycle. As you can see on the chart there, that upper band where the green lines are. Now those lines are basically between 710 uh, or, or 712 thousand dollars and the 750 peak. Now the peak, if this is your first time uh, listening to an ITEL Insights podcast, the peak actually occurred in January of 2018. So the market data in and of itself right now shows that the market is off 7%. Where are we getting these historic highs from? I mean, there's lots of conversation going on about historic months. Well, that's across BC, and I find that kind of odd that some of the analysts that cover Greater Vancouver are now talking about BC and kind of forget about talking about Greater Vancouver. So we'll, we'll, we'll stay on the same pack. We won't uh, move the goalpost. Um, speaking of moving the goalpost, uh, what's odd even about the current data that shows $600,000 or $700,000 average sale price, uh, which again is only down 7% from the peak, there's 19 markets that make up the real estate board of Greater Vancouver's condo market. Now, if you're a follower, you know that we've said 20 for the detached. That's because Bowen Island doesn't really have any condos or any condo data that they report. So there is only 19 markets for the Greater Vancouver condo market. Now, out of those 19, there are 12 that are double digit losses from their individual peak. Double digit meaning 10 plus, obviously, right? And then 10 plus is technically correction territory. Out of those um, 12, there are five that are in recession territory. Recession territory is a 20% loss plus. And again, five of those. Now, the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver does kick out the outliers, and that's normal, natural. But how many are you kicking out to show that it's only off of 7% when we have all these uh, exorbitant losses that are occurring? There's three markets that are 40% plus off of their individual peaks and for it to only be seven percent seems like a bit of an oddity and of course you know that we dive into the data and give you the analytics on each individual region um so it does seem a little bit uh, at, at opposites with what the board has reported this month so um but we'll see uh they report the data and we analyze it um so now here uh, what's interesting you know over the last f 15 months or so this last year or so there has been that um perceived period that we're market is bottoming we really don't see it that way as you can see by the chart here we think that it's basically tested that middle threshold it's come back up to that extra upper echelon ultimately will fail and and then proceed lower into the market cycle um again if it's your first time coming to itel insights this is the market cycle that we are projecting so this bottom orange range here is between 500 and call it eighty thousand dollars and five hundred and twenty five thousand dollars that's where we anticipate the average sale price to be during 2022 uh, and how we get there is, is is interesting right so we've been featured in the media for a number of years now and just on that we want to thank simi sara we we're on her cknw mornings with simi show earlier this month and uh, of course, with the Michael Campbell's Money Talks, uh, where our, our content is always featured on there. And uh, we were actually featured uh, with CBC. Uh, there was an opinion piece that classified uh, ITEL Insights with the Moody's Analytics, which was pretty high praise for us. So of course, we appreciate that. Um, so again, getting back to how, we're, how will we end up in 2022 at a much weaker place than we are now? Well, it only took 14 months for the market to drop from $750,000 the peak to $640,000, so that's $100,000 plus loss. Let's call it 100,000 at 650. So it took 14 months from 750 down to 650. It's taken the last 15 months to regain $50,000. So in an original loss of 100, back up to a $50,000 loss from the peak, 
And then what leads next would be a probably a period of weakness. Now, how do we get to the period of weakness? We're going to get to this with the other charts that are upcoming. First of all, it's that increased need to sell. We got a few examples of those that we'll get to here shortly. And, 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 and that definite want to get out of the market, not to mention the exodus from downtown. Uh, and, and then you have your, your, your sales factors. Um, what's interesting about that is we've called it a forecasted demand. It's actually called a push forward demand. Um, so that means that and the pent up demand. So in April, May and June, when you couldn't March, April, May and June, when you couldn't actually leave your house, that was called pent up demand. So that got released here in these recent months. And that's why everybody's touting these high sales numbers, high sales numbers. We'll get to that. It's not historic. It's historic when you compare it to the individual month of September. But the months of September are not your high seasonal water months or marks. This is an unusual activity month uh, market given historical seasonal norms. So leading into September and saying that it's a record year just because September saw high sales. No, it's a record year for September sales, but not compared to any other high water mark of really any other year. Uh, and you'll see that as we continue to go here. But um, so so going into this period of weakness, this economy and this second wave of COVID that everybody, even the bulls were fearful of of two or three months ago went that's over like we, we we got out of the woods there's no problem and now they're going okay well a second wave of covid might affect the market and now we're clearly go going into that and then it was well if the second tier covid effects actually hurt the economy that'll be a negative uh, prognostication well in, in our opinion the first wave never actually hit i mean you got the negative news you had to stay home but you, nobody goes broke quick as we've said in the past you go broke, broke very slowly First, you start to borrow and then you start to beg and then hopefully you don't steal, but that ends you up in a, in a negative economical position. Um, so those mom and pop shops that operated downtown in our cities, they're, they're the ones that are most struggling. The big chains, the big franchises, they're doing just fine, but the franchisee might not be doing so well. So when you close those doors, it will have a real ripple effect for employee for employment and, and on and on. Um, so just just going back here to the prices we're going to give you a couple of examples of what has transpired here and, and the, the the first one isn't exactly a highfalutin price but it is an interesting barometer um probably somebody that came to the market late based on a fear of missing out which is something that is very prevalent with a lot of realtors today and mortgage brokers and you know things are historically or the interest rates are historically low and they might go up well how much up are they going to go a few nominal points here and there but the prices will actually be much lower so you'll absolutely win in the long run but they want you to get into the market so they can have some activity, right? So uh, a purchase or a property was purchased in Port Coquitlam uh, during April of 2018. So very near that market peak. It was purchased for 432,000 because you got to buy or else you're going to miss out of this market, right? That was the thought at the time. Uh, uh, consequentially, two years later, April of 2020, he, the, the owners actually tried to list the property. So it was listed for 449,000, went down to 439, 429, 419. You seen a trend here? This guy, this 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 owner needs to sell. Get me out of the market. So when 419, 411, 399, an eventual sale price was 397 thousand dollars just achieved here in September. Now that is a, a just straight loss of 34 thousand dollars versus what he paid, let alone the commissions and the lawyers' fees and on and on. So that's that's kind of a, a, a not exactly the best example for any ownership that uh, tried to take advantage of of that wave and, or, or, or got bought into the fear of missing out. I bet you right now they wish they would have missed out on that opportunity. So I'll give you another opportunity or uh, uh, another case and scenario where maybe not exactly um, your lowest or your entry level price. It is very much on the upper echelon, and it's uh, but uh, so so is their losses. That's on the upper echelon as well. So in April of 2019, there was a property listed at 7.888 million dollars. In July, it went down to 7.388. May of 2020 again decreased down to 6.988, and in August 6.488. So there's some owners that chase that last $10. This guy seemingly or this owner was seemingly chasing the last 50,000. I want the most. And there might've been negotiations that were close, but never actually came to fruition. And he says, I want that extra 20. I want that extra 30 grand. Well, by the time it went from 7.888 down to five or down to 6.48, he said, sell it, Just get it gone, get it out of here. The actual sale price was for $5.6 million. So again, a high-end sale, but a high-end sale loss or a high-end uh, loss on your investment. That's $2.288 million lost of what he was expecting to sell it for in 2019. So this market already is off of peak conditions. 
the the British Columbia, you know, the exodus out of the lower mainland might have made BC look like it was halfway decent, but that was again pent up demand and and uh, uh, and forecast demand or, or pulled forward demand. Sorry, so that means that once you're done with this phase of pent up and pulled forward. What are you left with in the upcoming years? There won't be very much investment because you can see investing isn't going very well. Um, and, and so again, we're back to that owner-occupied type of market. That owner-occupied type of market, we're gonna get into the inventory here so you can kind of see what's going on, okay? So the, the total inventory for the uh, month of September hit a 15 or hit a five-year high. Uh, uh, the new inventory hit the 15-year high and we'll get into that here in a bit. So I'll just share this chart on your screen. Um, so over the past five years, we haven't seen inventory past 6,200 and we're at 6,279. It was actually not past, uh, I believe around 6,100. So the last two months have created the, past, the high of the past five years. Um, as you can see that want to sell is, is definitely percolating and rising up, leading you to a need to sell. And there are already very, very much examples of a need to sell already existing inside of this market. Um, what's interesting, so I'm going to leave this chart over here on the side for you for, for a little bit, but what's interesting about this is that, you know, the inventory is increasing due to the fact that some of these headlines are saying that sales occur, but what actually happens when they come to the market, they get very much disappointed, right? So the conversation that you had with your realtor about maybe, you know, this might take two or three weeks, price it at this and we'll hold an open house seemingly is disappointing and that's why you're seeing a lot of new inventory pop up and i'm just going to pull this up on your on your screen so that you can follow along here and this is the interesting one so um again the 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 pundits the bullish uh pundits the uh the the board itself is touted sales and sales were undeniably higher but not all-time highs and we'll get into that but was what was truly an all-time high was the brand new monthly active listings there was 3,258 newly active condos that were added to the real estate board of Greater Vancouver's market in September of 2020. That is the highest ever, not just highest, highest seasonally, highest ever. So, I, I mean, there, there are doings transpiring and it might not be to the seller's benefit. But again, they're listening to some of this bullish talk and they're going, okay, I'm going to put my property in the market, it's going to sell. And the unfortunate thing about that is, of course, it's not, and, and, and there's more competition. So when you had that discussion, there wasn't as many properties as probably as by the time you put it on. Once you hold that open house, and even if it's a decently active or, or, or um, visited property, and say there's 10 a day, those condo prospective condo purchasers have a lot or have a plethora of opportunities to go and see other condos of a similar type price. So now it's all about price, right? There is no longer about condition for a lot of units. Now on that, this inventory market, this the total inventory and the new inventory market is going to be absolutely um, decimated or, or forever changed, I should say, due to the amount of new inventory coming to the market, coming from completions. Now, one of the interesting things is during 2016, 17, and 18, when all those pre-sales were occurring, those sales on a majority basis, I'd say about 95% of the time, weren't actually calculated as a sale or as a sale price down at uh, the MLS because you would only see maybe one or two listings of the building put up for sale on the MLS, but there was a plethora of them available. So you ended up entering into a private contract with the developer. Those sales don't get recorded, uh, again, by the MLS. They do get recorded by CMHC, but not by the, the data that we use here. So that could be a little bit of a misleading factor going into next year or, or even what we're seeing right now is those completions that have occurred, they're the first to the market that are brand new and a shiny penny. Everybody wants a shiny penny. You don't want that old penny, right? So um, that is what's happening right now. And that's maybe why the average sale price has ticked up a bit is because that newly active inventory is a very high price per square foot and small square footage, but still ultimately a higher price. So even if they purchased that at 900,000 and they're selling it at 750 or selling it at 825, or maybe even getting out with their skin at selling it at 900 minus commissions, it's maybe not the best investment, but it still increases to the average sale price. Going forward, uh, something we've said a few years ago that we said would come to fruition in a few years from then, leading to now, leading to the up few months, um, is a cannibalization of the condo market. By that, we mean the new shiny penny will be in demand, especially given all these insurance issues and the strata fee issues because of the insurance premiums. A new building won't have those issues. They are warrantied for 10 years, the envelope, right? So you're, you're, you, you would be in a safer position and, and new buyers looking to purchase any condo want to be in a safer position and not pay so much for something that they're not necessarily using, such as the strata fee. They want to pay for their livable square footage until that those 
older buildings that maybe have some issues get rem remedied. You, you, you pay for the pipes to be replaced, you pay for the elevator to be replaced, and, now, and, and of course you had to slash your price because the competition is there. But once you do slash that price, the buyer investment or the buyer mentality might go, hey, listen, there's a thousand square foot property over there for a two bedroom, two bathroom, and this one and a half bath or two bedroom, two bathroom in this new place is what, 700 square feet? Like, wow, that's a, that's a huge difference. And the prices are even like crazy. So eventually that will flip back and reverse over. And that is that cannibalization of the market. The older buildings, you're gonna have a tough slog here trying to sell. Um, we've advised you to get out in front of it and we hope that you did. Um, but going forward, it's gonna be a very challenging market and, and almost a tale of two markets inside of the one. Uh, the elder buildings will have a tough time selling and the new buildings will be your initial draw, but then you go, wait, why am I paying so much? And as that competition increases with more and more completions, that'll be that chase lower. And of course the, uh, the resale side, the uh, 10, 15, 20 year old building will be impacted even more uh, exponentially than the brand new ones, but it's still going lower longer, especially with increased inventory, right? Um, so again, going back to our inventory, currently with our levels at 62,700 and, or sorry, 62,079, um, we, we do anticipate to see next year. I mean, we do have seasonal factors that should eventually come back and take place. I mean, I wouldn't expect to see a brand new all-time high put into December, but strange things happen in 2020. Seasonal activity is no longer seasonal. It's unusual activity just given how the market has played out. So that remains to be seen. We'll see how all that filters out. But going into the spring and summer of next year, you know, a couple of years into COVID and everybody wears masks, you know, the new routine and, and hopefully some, something has come out that we can maybe mitigate this factor a bit. It'll just be the new normal. And that will increase the inventory because that need to sell is rising, right? Nobody's, um, the investment community isn't, hasn't done very well by investing into the pre-sale market and, and they're not even able to resell it right now. And all that assignment talk from 2018, those sellers got out very, very well. The buyers, maybe not so much, right? If you, if you signed on the dotted line at an assignment sale and it said, I just paid 80,000 or a hundred thousand dollars more than the guy that bought it six months ago. And then you tried to resell it and you got stuck with it. Mm. It could be a challenging time upcoming for you. Um, so now let's get into the sales, which is what was highly touted again in the, the, the highest actual number, the 15 year high was whispered, right? So it's interesting which one gets screamed and which one gets whispered with us. You'll, 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 you'll see it all. Um, so here, here's the chart. It's uh, the, the sales for September actually hit 1,598 sales. Now that is unabashedly the highest over the past couple of years. But again, look at the chart. Is that the high? It's not even close to the high. So what are we talking about here? Where is these historic highs coming from inside of Greater Vancouver? Or are we talking about Pic Penticton or, or Kamloops or all, like, what are we talking about? All the pundits that used to talk about Greater Vancouver are now talking about BC. So Greater Vancouver is still, it, it, it's a market again, right? I mean, some market, some properties, if they're sharp, uh, if the property is priced sharply, it'll go. If the property is overpriced, you're gonna be chasing that market lower longer. Um, you, you don't want to chase the, the, the uh, bird in the bush when you got two in the hand. If you got an offer, we advise that you might want to start negotiating it and deal with it. And you might not get out exactly what you want, but going forward over the next couple of years with all this increased inventory and all this increased competition, it'll probably behoove you to take the price given today's value. Um, and again, this, this, this demand was a lot of it from that pent up factor where you, I mean, and again, March, April, and May were those lows. I mean, and again, low seasonally, but also low for, for, for that period of time when it is seasonal. So now the factor that it's unseasonal, they're saying, well, this is actually the one that you should pay attention to. Don't pay attention to April. That one was just an oddity. This one's uh, the new trend. No, this one's an oddity too, okay? I mean, when you got one odd, the other one's probably the reaction from the initial uh, abnormality. So uh, now going forward, I mean, September did see a lot of transactions. This number of 1,598 sales is the amount of completion. So these are the, I exchanged the keys. I got my keys for the condo. I actually live in it. The accepted offers are where you get your sale price from. And again, that one seems a little bit odd given that 12 markets out of the 19 are double digit losses, but we'll leave that for now. Um, going forward, we can expect to see probably some activity here on these completion numbers for the next quarter or so. Um, th th this, uh, like I say, the pent up and the pulled forward demand did really see an, ex or, uh, see an exemplification of everybody coming to the market at the same time which probably leads to a, a slower and a, and a less uh, um, buyer active market in 2021. Once that starts to uh, extrapolate, more sellers will, get, will start to get concerned. The economy will likely still weaken. I mean, and if you own the mom and pop shop, 
before you sell your house, you're gonna try and sell the investment condos and that's literally what's going on right now. The unfortunate thing again is these sales don't come close to the amount of brand new active market or inventory that's coming to the market on a, hit, on a consistent basis. Six months in a row, the sales were less than half of the brand new inventory. Extrapolate that out, you got a supply demand problem. Um, f for the owners, for the buyers, yeah, we, we got time on your side. There will be increased inventory. And um, again, don't be really tricked into this rising interest rate market. They, they did come down, they might go up, but it's all nominal, right? When the average sale price is way off of the old peak, you're still doing much better. And of course, with the average sale price being 700,000, that's not where we expect this market to bottom uh, going up or uh, upcoming over the next few years. These prices will continue to decrease. And for sellers, that will just mean that you'll have to chase the market lower. For buyers, you get to sit back and eventually uh, pick off your property at an opportune time. For that opportune time, again, we do individual market analysis for every single condo market. So if you want to know which one is off maybe 40% and see which one you might want to invest in versus the one that it, you know is in the single digits, that's not where we want to be right now. So there are some advantageous areas inside of Greater Vancouver. By no means are we done this whole market yet. But if you're looking to purchase, there are some areas that you could even get a green light from Mitel Insights. Not very many, but a few. I hope you enjoyed the podcast again. If you uh, feel so inclined, give us a, a nice comment. And of course, we appreciate those thumbs up and feel free to share this message with your friends and your family. Take care, folks.